Good morning. If you have decided to study to become a professional hypnotherapist, it is necessary that you know your predecessors, the history of hypnosis, the emergences of scientific hypnosis, the historical evolution of the study of hypnosis, suggesting and suggestibility will radically change scenario, as it happened with scientific psychology. The new contributions will come mainly from the United States of America. During the first years of the present century, few in Europe maintained the use of hypnosis, especially since Freud replaced these techniques by free association. In the United States of America, some authors grouped around Harvard University maintain their interest in hypnosis and the phenomena of dissociation. Another independent line of work was led by Hall, 1933 who carried out the first laboratory studies on cell stability and hypnosis at Yale University. Finally, the essential clinical work of one of Hall's students, Milton H. Erickson, who would eventually be considered one of the most outstanding therapists in the field of clinical hypnosis, is not worthy in the 1920s and 1930s. In any case, the activity of these authors can be considered as isolated because in no case had continuity and their contribution to the study of hypnosis would not be formally recognized until several decades later. However, with the Second World War, the need for quick and effective intervention in military hospitals and on the combat front revived the interest in the use of hypnosis and by extension the interest in the possible usefulness of these techniques in the clinical setting in general. Therefore, at the end of the 1940s and in the 1950s, two professional societies were founded. The Society for Clinical and Experimental Hypnosis, in 1949 and which in 1948 would become the International Society for Clinical and Experimental Hypnosis, or the American Society of Clinical Hypnosis in 1958 which, with their respective regular publications, the Journal of Clinical and Experimental Hypnosis and the American Journal of Clinical Hypnosis, respectively, would contribute to the increase in the interest and application of hypnosis to the point that, in 1958, the American Medical Association and the British Medical Association legitimized its use within the professional fields of physicians and psychologists. This change of airs occurred in the 50s and finally favored the definitive entry of hypnosis in experimental psychology laboratories, which formally initiated the period known as scientific hypnosis. In 1957, Ernest R. Hilgard founded the first hypnosis laboratory at Standard University, California, dedicated to the elaboration of scales to measure the hypnotistability or capacity to be hypnotized in the general population, as well as to study the relationship of hypnosis with variables such as age, sex, personality, characteristics, etc. Barber, in 1969, and his collaborators developed scales to evaluate the suggestibility and the capacity of imagination before determined instruction. Hypnotism in Spain In Spain and Portugal, there was a very limited interest in hypnotism and hypnotherapy, partly because the close association between spiritualism, mesmerism, hypnotism produced a suspicious and hostile attitude on the part of the Catholic authorities towards these subjects of study. The beginning of the interest of Spanish scientific institutions, and more specifically of medicine for hypnotism, can be established in December 1859, when in an article is published, signed with the initials R.E. A novelty in science, about a woman who had been operated on using hypnotism as the only anesthetic means. As main conclusion of the historical evolution of hypnotism in Spain, we can emphasize the following. It is remarkable the receptive attitudes on the part of the Spanish scientists in relation to what was happening in the rest of Europe. An attitude of certain caution is perceived in relation to the events that on the hypnotism were taking place in France, although the possibility of an investigation on the hypnotism is not rejected. The first of them is Nobel Prize winner Santiago Ramón y Cajal, 
although his contribution to the development of modern neuropsychology is well known. However, few biographers and researchers emphasize his interest in the clinical application and research of hypnotism. In fact, during his stay in Valencia in the year 1886-87, he dedicated a good part of his professional activity to the clinical treatment with hypnosis techniques. And being already professor of history in Madrid, he published his consideration on the aspects that favor the induction of the hypnotic state in relation to physiological sleep. Ramon de Cajal considered that the gray matter was functionally like an insulting and commuter apparatus of the nervous impulse, commutator in the state of activity and insulator in the state of rest. Later, Abdon Sanchez Herrero can be considered as the best representative of the Nancy School in Spain. He began his studies on hypnotism being a professor at the Faculty of Medicine of Cadiz and published his observations in 1887, when he was already professor of pathology and medical clinic in Valladolid. His conceptions on the nature of hypnosis are very close to those of Bernheim. In general, the attitude maintained by Spanish scientists in relation to the development of magnetism and hypnotism throughout the second half of the 18th and 19th century seems to have been much more active than traditionally assumed, although, unfortunately, the international projection of their work has been scarce. Conclusions Throughout the historical journey, we have focused especially on those figures who, in our opinion, have made relevant contributions on the nature of suggestion and hypnosis. We can draw the following conclusions. 1. From the point of view of procedural variables, the evolution of hypnosis techniques can be delineated as follows. From the laying on of hands to the reintroduction of the combination of both modalities and finally to the present preponderance of verbal suggestion. In each period of the development of hypnosis, we can see touches of verbal and manipulative techniques, although the dominant transition has been from tactile to verbal procedures, frequently accompanied by some kind of eye fixation technique as a mechanism for maintaining the attention of the subject. Throughout the different historical periods of the rise of hypnosis, there have been two predominant theoretical positions. One which states that hypnotic phenomena are a functional of a special state that is accessed by specific procedures, and two, that it is not necessary to resort to the concept of special or altered state to justify the phenomena produced by hypnosis, since it can be sufficiently explained through the capacities of imagination and concentration of the subject, a high level of suggestibility. Both positions have been generally confronted, generating theoretical or conceptual frameworks, which have evolved in parallel being apparently irreconcilable. In the following tables, we summarize the theoretical contribution of the most relevant historical figures that we have detailed throughout this chapter. With the entry of hypnosis in the psychology laboratory, a new dictominous position is generated, experimental hypnosis versus clinical hypnosis. This position leads to the fact that the data obtained by the laboratory are not always coherent with those generated in the applied fields, which promotes a new source of conflict in the fields of hypnosis. Currently, there seems to be a tendency towards overcoming this controversy, bringing this position closer by conceiving hypnosis as a set of procedures that enhance certain pre-existing capabilities in individuals. In this sense, Variables such as expectations, attitudes, roles, the type of instructions or suggestions administrated, the subject beliefs about the effectiveness of the operator, the capacity to focus and redirect attention, the capacity for relaxation, imagination, emotional involvement, dissociation, etc. will be variables to be considered when proposing a consistent explanatory model about the nature of the hypnotic process most relevant theoretical approaches throughout the history of hypnosis.
If you have questions, ask them in the comments area. On this topic and many others, we will talk about in the channel and in the video that we will publish. So if you are interested, do not miss our next videos. Thank you very much.